So a while back I posted a video showing a helicopter rotor system along with the flight controls and my intent was to kind of show how the flight controls influence the rotor movement, rotor response, kind of a motion and effect of flight controls video. There were a couple of comments from that first video suggesting that I did not properly animate this concept called phase delay in a, in a rotor control system and that's the purpose of the second video is to try to explain that more clearly and to show that I did account for it in how the rotor reacts to pilot control inputs. I'll start by minimizing a lot of this extraneous stuff here so that we're only looking at the rotor system and I'll uh, to make this more clear too I'll put this green arrow into the picture. Um, the green arrow represents the direction of forward flight. And then just to keep things simple in this video I'm going to primarily focus on longitudinal cyclic um, inputs. So right now I'm cycling the longitudinal cyclic forward and aft and you can see what the response is in the rotor system and the swashplate. Just at the start of the video here, I'll go ahead and cycle the uh, um, lateral cyclic flight control side to side. And again, you can see what the response is in the swash plate and the rotor system. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to focus on longitudinal cyclic control inputs. And before talking about the concept of phase delay, we'll just briefly touch on motion and effect of flight controls in a helicopter. So I put this blue arrow on the top of the rotor system to indicate the direction the thrust vector is pointing. And moving the cyclic stick to the left and to the right is going to tilt that thrust vector to the left and the right, and the helicopter is going to follow in that direction. That's how we turn a helicopter, by moving the cyclic stick left and right and getting that left and right tilt on the thrust vector. And the whole idea of helicopter control is to influence which direction that thrust vector points, and that's how you control the aircraft. It, uh, we can use that to accelerate forward, to decelerate, to turn left and right. So starting with the collective control in the pilot's left hand, raising and lowering the collective increases and decreases the thrust vector that's uh, normal to the planar rotation of the rotor blades. And then finally, and the, uh, the emphasis of this video is going to be that longitudinal control input. So moving the cyclic stick longitudinally fore and aft is going to tilt that blue thrust vector forward when we push the cyclic stick forward, and it's going to move it to the aft when we tilt the cyclic stick aft. This will create a nose down pitch and an acceleration in airspeed when we push the stick forward and a nose up pitch and a deceleration in airspeed when we pull the stick aft. An important point to note here too is that what I'm showing in the animation here is the initial response of the rotor system. There's going to be some more aerodynamic forces that take place. Um, things like blowback and forward flight dissymmetry of lift that is going to have this rotor system do something different once it reaches equilibrium. But um, for the purpose of this video, this is fine. We're showing the initial response of the rotor system. And the way that the pilot is able to make these blades move to make the tip path plane move so that it, it influences the direction of the helicopter is by changing the feathering angle or the pitch angle of the blades. This is analogous to uh, changing the angle of attack in an airplane. You increase the angle of attack and produce more lift, decrease the angle of attack and you produce less lift. It's that lift that we're applying to the rotor blade that makes the blades flap upward or downward and influence the overall tilt of the tip path plane. So I'll be a little repetitious here just because it's an important concept. So the pilot moves the flight controls in the cockpit. This changes the pitch of the blades. The pitch change on the blades influences how much lift they produce and then that lift is what tilts the tip path plane in the direction that you want in order to get the thrust vector to point towards where you want the helicopter to go. That is the fundamental of helicopter rotor control and the motion and effect of flight controls. But the specific purpose of this video is to talk about the point in the rotation of the rotor system on where we want to apply that control in order to get the desired effect. So in this case of a forward longitudinal cyclic input, we want the rotor system to tilt forward as is shown in the animation here. And the question comes, where do we want the point of maximum lift to occur in order to achieve maximum displacement in the flapping axis at the six o'clock position as is shown on the video here. And all helicopter pilots, when they're doing their initial learning about helicopter aerodynamics, they go through this moment of uh, having their intuition challenged. I believe most people would think that the maximum point of lift would occur at the maximum point of displacement, but this is not correct and it's not correct because of this phenomenon called phase lag. Probably worth mentioning also that the thing that I'm referring to as phase lag is referred to a lot of helicopter, most mostly helicopter training handbooks, as this thing called gyroscopic precession. I think the more 
sciencey textbooks tend to call it phase lag, and and they also point out that um, this is a characteristic of any dynamic system, including dynamic systems that um, that that don't rotate. So uh, I don't know. Take your take your pick: gyroscopic precession or phase lag. The concept that we're talking about is that the point of maximum displacement of the thing that's being displaced does not occur at the same point of maximum force. And the two variables that come into play when you're trying to figure out the amount of phase delay between the force that's applied and where the displacement occurs turns out to be the frequency of the two systems. So in this case, the cyclic input to the rotor system is at one per rev. They end up being the same frequency. The frequency that the blade flapping is occurring and the frequency that the blades are rotating is nearly the same. And that works out to a phase delay angle of about 90 degrees. And the reason that it's not exactly 90 degrees is because the flapping axis of the rotor blade is actually slightly offset from the center of rotation of the rotor system. And this introduces a phase delay angle that's slightly less than 90 degrees. Um, what I have modeled in this animation is a phase delay angle of 85 degrees. And so that means that if we want the maximum flapping to occur at the six o'clock position of the rotor system in response to a forward cyclic input, then we want the maximum lift on that blade to occur 85 degrees before that point in the flapping cycle. And here's where this video starts to look a little bit counterintuitive. I just said that we wanted this maximum flapping angle to occur at the six o'clock position. And that means we want to start putting the control input in at the nine o'clock position. And intuitively, we might expect the swash plate to be rotating purely about the x-axis side to side in order to get this longitudinal cyclic tilt, but you can see that's not what happens here. This swash plate rotates about an axis that's uh, maybe about 45 degrees off of what we would expect. But instead of looking at the swash plate to see if phase delay is modeled correctly in the animation, what we can look at is we can actually look at the pitch angle of the blade. So this um, quadrant in the upper right here where you see the cross section of a rotor blade that's actually a blade tip mounted camera pointed down the span of the blade so if i start the animation here you're going to see that the camera doesn't move it tracks with the blade and you can actually track the uh, pitch angle of this one particular rotor blade so we're looking for this red blade to be at its maximum flapping angle at the six o'clock position let's just kind of move the animation back and forth until we find where the red blade achieves its match maximum pitch angle. All right, so I'll just grab the blender animation slider and just kind of move this along. And when I get to where it looks like it's about at the maximum pitch angle, I'll just kind of slide that back and forth. So, um, so I'm calling this right here the maximum pitch angle for the blade, the point where the blade is generating the maximum lift. And look at that. It's about 85 degrees prior to the six o'clock position of the rotor system. And, and so I maybe understand the source of confusion here. We are trying to influence this rotor blade with the maximum pitch angle at the nine o'clock position so that it can be at the maximum flapping angle at the six o'clock position. You would think that that would mean a pure lateral x-axis rotation of the swash plate, um, but it's not. And the reason it's not is because even though we're trying to influence this blade at the nine o'clock position, uh, look where the pitch link is. The pitch link is not at the nine o'clock position, and that's what controls the um, feathering angle or the pitch angle of the blade. To try and make that a little bit more clear, let me go ahead and uh, and put a plane here that bisects that pitch link and do some longitudinal four and a half cyclic inputs. And now this seems to make sense. So we're not looking for a lateral rotation of the swash plate in order to achieve longitudinal tilt of the tip path plane, what we're looking for is this sort of skewed axis going through about, looks like about 30 degrees before the six o'clock position where the rotation of the swash plate is centered. So that's it. That's my explanation of why this swash plate behavior doesn't seem like it's what you expect in order to control this rotor system. I do believe it is correct and I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. So if you'd like to see more content like this with visualizations of helicopter rotor control and aerodynamics, please like, subscribe, and drop a note in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Thanks for watching.